Hello there, boys and girls. Tonight's lesson is lesson 5.1, Model Factors. Our essential question is how can you use models to find factors? Please write this down in your notes. How can you use models to find factors? Now before we begin, we need to know exactly what a factor is. A factor is a number multiplied by another number to find a product. Now remember, we've learned before that a product is the answer to a multiplication problem. But factors are those numbers multiplied together to find the product. For example, if I had 3 times 5 equals 15, I would know that my factors would be 3 and 5 because 15 is the product. Now it's also important for you to know that every whole number greater than 1 has at least two factors. They'll always have that number and 1. For example, the number 7 will have to have the numbers 1 and 7 to be its factors to equal the product of 7. The number 4 has more than just 1 in itself. It has 1 times 4, but it also has 2 times 2. Let's think about the number 6. It has more than two factors, too. It has 1 times 6, but it also has 2 times 3. Then we have the number 11. What are the factors for 11? I know 1 times 11 equals 11. There's no other factors that equal 11 except 1 in itself. So every whole number greater than 1 has at least two factors. 1 times itself. So let's look at this slide right here. This says many numbers can be broken into factors in different ways. If I had the number 16, it has a lot of factors. The factors for 16 are 1 times 16. If you look at this array right here, you can see that I have one row one row and I have 16 units going across. This means that I have 16 all together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this model shows 1 times 16 equals a total of 16. Looking at my next model, I have 4 rows up, 4 rows across, so all together, 4 times 4 is 16. Because if you count up my units, I would have 16. Because 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, or 4 times 4, is 16. Now let's look at this last example. I have two rows of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 2 means all together I, I have 16 units because I have 2 times 8 is 16. These are just three models to show the value of 16. My factors are 1, 16, 2 times 8, and 4 times 4. You can draw or create models to show arrays to find factors of a number. So let's find the factors for 10 using the models. If you look right here, I have two models for 10. I have two rows of 5. So this would be 2 times 5. And if I add up all the pieces, I have a value of 10. So the product would be 10. On this one, I have one row of 10 units. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I would have 1 times 10 equals a value of 10. So all the factors of 10 are going to be 1 and 10 and 2 times 5. There are four different factors for 10. So now let's use the arrays to name the factors for 12. And th on these three pictures, I have one row of 12 across, I have two rows of 6 across, and I have four rows of 3 across. So I can say all of my factors for 12 would be 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. 
Now, I have a strategy that I like to do whenever I want to find all of my factors. A good strategy is always to start with 1 and itself. So here would be 1 and 12. Then I start working towards itself. The next number up would be 2 and 6, 3, then 4. Now, I, once I start repeating myself using the commutative property, 4 times 3, I know I've already used them up, so that means that I've listed them all. So for the number 12, my factors for 12 would be 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. And these three models show exactly that. So now let's ask ourselves, what is the factors of 18? Well, the strategy, like I just told you on the other slide, would be to start with 1 and itself, and then I'm going to just work my way towards the middle. I'm going to go up to the next one. I know 2 times 9 is 18. Then we're going to go up to 3. Is 3 a factor of 18? Yes, it is, because I know 3 times 6 is 18. Then I go to the next number of 4. 4. Is 4 a factor of 18? Well, if you think of your multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 18 is not one of those. So 4 is not a factor of 18. Let's go to the next number, 5. Would 5 be a factor of 18? Well, I know my multiples of 5 are 5, 10, 15, 20. So 5 is not a factor of 18 as well. Well, now I'm back to 6 again. So once you start repeating yourself, you listed them all. So my factors of 18 are 1 and 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. And those are all my factors of 18. Now if you want to draw a model to show those factors once you've listed them, you can do that. You can start out by making a long rectangle to show 1 by 18. Now if you want, you can draw the 18 units inside or you can just draw an array and say 1 by 18. I also know I can make a model of 2 by 9 and I also know 3 by 6. Those would be my three different models to show my factors of 18. So let's think about what are the factors of 9. Again, let's use that strategy starting with 1 times 9. My next one, 2. Is 2 going to be a factor of 9? Right away I know it wouldn't be because I know 2 is an even number and 9 is not. So if I list my multiples of 2, I would not reach 9. So I can go to 3. I do know 3 times 3 is 9. So whenever you have a, a number that is the same number, 3 times 3, you actually don't have to list them both. You can just say 3 is the factor of 9. So my factors of 9 are 1, 3, and 9. If I were to draw models, you can make a rectangle of 1 by 9. I like to try to draw my rectangles to resemble what it would look like if there were to be units. For example, if this was 1 by 9, I should be able to fit 9 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then 3 by 3, it should be a little bit longer like a perfect square because it's going to be 3 rows up, 3 rows across. So that's what it would look like as a model. So those are my factors of 9. 1, 3, and 9. So let's read this word problem. It says, Jean spent $16 on new t-shirts. If each shirt cost the same whole dollar amount, how many could she have bought? In order to answer this question, you need to find your factors of 16. So let's think about my factors of 16. I know 1 times 16. First of all, you always want to start with 1 in itself. And then work your way towards the middle. I know 2 times 8. And I know 4 times 4. So those are my going to be my factors of 16. Now again, like I told you earlier, 4 times 4 is 16. Because we're listing our factors of 16, we don't have to list 4 twice. So these are all of my factors of 16. 1 times 16, 2 times 8. I know 3 is not a factor of 16, but I do know 4 is a factor of 16. And I know 5 is not 1, 6 is not 1, and 7 is not 1. And once I'm back to 8, I know that I have used them all, so I am good to go. So now let's go ahead and let's um, answer this question. It says, Jean spent $16 on new t-shirts. If each shirt 
cost the same whole dollar amount, how many could she have bought? Well, looking at my factors, I know she could have bought one shirt for how much money? What's his partner? $16. One shirt for $16. She could have bought two shirts for how much money? Two shirts for $8 each. She could have bought four shirts for how much a piece? For $4 each. Now, she could also, using the community of property, she could have bought eight shirts at a very discounted rate. <laughs> eight shirts she could have bought for $2 each. And then let's go to 16. 16 shirts would have been $1 each. So those would have been really cheap shirts, right? 16 shirts for one dollar, I'll do that, one dollar a piece or each. So let's see if our answer makes sense. If Jean spent sixteen dollars on new t-shirts, if each shirt costs the same whole dollar amount, how many could she have bought? So she could have bought one shirt only for sixteen dollars, or she could have bought two shirts only for eight dollars a piece. She could have bought four shirts for four dollars each. She could have bought eight shirts at two dollars a piece, or she could have bought 16 shirts for one dollar each. These are all the different combinations that she could have spent. So let's take a look at our two homework questions for tonight. Our first homework question says, what are the factors of 21? Think about your factors of 21 what are all the numbers you can multiply together to get the product of 21? And then, once you find those, draw the rectangular models to show your pictures. Next question. Which of the following shows a factor pair for the number 16? Would it be 2 and 8? Are 2 and 32 factor pairs? Are 8 and 16 factor pairs? Or are 16 and 32 factor pairs? Now remember, a factor pair are two numbers that you multiply together to equal your product. So think about which what two of these numbers would you multiply together to get the product of 16. Once you're done answering these two quick questions, I want you to assess yourself. I need you to ask yourself, do you feel like you're a novice? Are you not understanding what factors are? Two, are you an apprentice? Are you starting to get this, but you need coaching? Three, are you a practitioner? You know your factors. Or four, are you an expert? You know this so well that you can teach it to a friend. And here are your homework questions again. Go ahead and work on them, and then we'll discuss the two answers tomorrow as we practice more factor activities. See you tomorrow. Have a great night.